there are over 30 harmful substances in cigarette smoke, including alkaloids, arsenic, nicotine, aldehydes, and others. Many of these are deadly poisons. Of special significance is benzopyrene, which is one of the known cancer-producing agents. As the tobacco burns, it reaches temperatures as high as 1600 degrees Fahrenheit, and this process causes physical and chemical changes in the nicotine, tars, and other substances. Most of these products are gaseous at high temperatures, and they become part of the smoke that is carried into the respiratory passages and absorbed through the mucous membrane and the tissues. Foremost among these substances is carbon monoxide, which is the killer in automobile exhaust. In order to illustrate the harmful effects of even small amounts of carbon monoxide upon the body, let's take a look at the breathing cycle. When you breathe clean air, oxygen enters the lungs, where it finds its way to the red corpuscles of the bloodstream. The heart then pumps the blood to the body cells, which in turn utilize the oxygen. As you smoke, carbon monoxide, the poisonous gas we have mentioned, is attracted to the red corpuscles, just as the oxygen was, only more strongly. These carbon monoxide molecules take over some of the red blood corpuscles, decreasing the capacity of the blood to carry oxygen to the tissues. In other words, they prevent the oxygen from reaching the red blood cells, thereby reducing the oxygen transportation by 5 to 15 percent. This is one of the reasons why the smoker cannot run as fast or as far as he could if he didn't smoke. Another bad actor in cigarettes is nicotine. Nicotine is an alkaloid and works upon the nerve centers of the brain that regulate the heartbeat and breathing. In addition, nicotine causes the small blood vessels to get smaller or constrict. There is substantial evidence that continuous smoking causes the small blood vessels to lose their elasticity and this increases the possibility of heart trouble and blood vessel diseases. The heavy smoker smokes the equivalent of a cigarette over six feet long every day, or one about the length of a coffin. But among the real threats in smoking are the killers known as the carcinogens the cancer-producing agents found in the tars condensed out of the tobacco smoke and deposited into the bronchial tubes leading to the lungs. And with a person's constant smoking day after day, the carcinogens build up a mighty force. From the bronchial tubes, the carcinogens move into the air tubes of the lung, where they begin to antagonize systematically the cells of the air tubes. why the cells change and become abnormal. But they begin to grow and affect those cells around them until the victim finds himself hopelessly afflicted with lung cancer. A non-smoker has about one chance in 270 of developing this disease, while a man who continues to smoke two packs a day has only about one chance in 10. And 95% of those afflicted will eventually die from the cancer. And so the evil cycle goes on and on. Our cigarette's gone now. Let's see what we've gathered from it. Keep in mind what was said about nicotine. It's a poison, deadly poison. It ranks with cyanide. Now this residue is made up of nicotine and tars, a portion of which gets into your lungs 
every time you smoke a cigarette. You smoke a pack and a half of cigarettes a day for a year, and a full quart of these poisons will be poured into your bodies. And what does it do? Well, let's see what it does to, uh, to a mouse. Where, fella? There we go. Now, this tube contains pure nicotine. And I'm going to give this little fella one drop. Fortunately, man is many times larger than a mouse. For that amount of nicotine would kill him just like it kills the mouse. Now, our bodies have the ability to increase tolerance to these substances, but the harmful effect continues. By habitual smoking and by the constant dousing of the respiratory passages with these poisons, the body doesn't have much of a chance to function properly. For instance, we know that heart action is definitely impaired, and this increases the danger of heart disease. Through smoking, stomach ulcers are aggravated, healing is delayed, and the ulcers may become malignant. Current research indicates that uh, many other organs and tissues of the body are adversely affected by the use of tobacco. And of course, you've just seen what an important part smoking plays in the causing of lung cancer. Yes? Hey, Doc, I read that there really hasn't been an increase in lung cancer. But it's only our more complete diagnosis now. Well, we'll admit that some lung cancer may have been poorly diagnosed in the past. But in the year 1912, there were only 276 known cases of lung cancer in the whole United States. Today, it kills more than 35,000 Americans every year. Now, these statistics show the interesting parallel between the increase in tobacco consumption and the increase in lung cancer. Notice the similarity in the two. It's interesting to note that lung cancer used to be a man's disease. But now with women smoking heavily, their death rate from this affliction is rapidly approaching that of men. What about filters? They're supposed to prevent most of the tar and nicotine from reaching you, aren't they? Well, filters might help, except for two things. The added cigarette length means that the smoker usually smokes the cigarette nearly down to the filter and thus he gets all of the nicotine and the tar that he would normally throw away with a longer cigarette butt. And secondly, no one has yet produced a filter that removes all of the poison from the smoke and yet keeps the taste that the smoker demands. Yes? Doc, how about all them old codgers that's been smoking all their life and don't show any signs of cancer or anything else? As far as cancer is concerned, not everyone's going to get it. There appears to be susceptibility to it. And there's the time factor involved. Cancer usually strikes in the 50s. Of course, the problem is you don't know whether you're one of those people who will get cancer until you've got it, or it's got you. And then it may be too late. As for those old codgers you mentioned, they may have been less sensitive to tobacco poisons. Trouble is, no one knows whether he's sensitive or not. Smoking is sort of like playing Russian roulette. Or to quote Dr. Oxner, tobacco is a loaded pistol, and time pulls the trigger. Now, men, the American Cancer Society recently made a study based upon the smoking habits of 188,000 American men and concluded that smokers of two or more packs of cigarettes per day have a death rate 
123% higher than non-smokers. In other words, by the time the median age of 69 is reached, for every 10 non-smokers who have died, 22 heavy smokers will have died, and 17 light smokers will have died. Now this means the average heavy smoker, two packs a day, will die around the age of 58 years, while the average non-smoker will last until he's 69. Now the value of this report lies in its scope, its thoroughness, and the unquestionable scientific accuracy upon which it is based. For example, the death rate from heart disease in this group of 188,000 men was twice as high as indicated by these headstones among smokers as non-smokers. And get this, the rate of deaths from lung cancer was 20 times higher than among non-smokers. Now men, these findings are being sent to your doctor and to every private and public health service in this country. Not only our own government, but other governments are concerned about the rising incidence in lung cancer. And they are publishing warnings to cigarette smokers about the risks they are taking when they smoke. For example, the governments of Britain and Australia recently engaged in a poster campaign against the use of tobacco. And in Holland, Sweden, and Austria, the governments and the local school authorities are actively advising their young people not to take up smoking. Now friends, governments, agencies, and doctors can advise and point up the way. But after all, what you do with your own life is up to you. Now you have the facts. So start to think for yourselves. Get smart. Tobacco was a false need. Sure, it may be hard to quit, but you can if you really want to. Now, most of you can have a second chance if you'll stop smoking today. And I promise you, if you do, your food will taste better. Your breath will be sweeter. Your eyes will be clearer, and your whole body will function better. In short, you will live longer, and you'll enjoy life more. Well, that's it, fellas. Thanks a lot. Say, Doc, can I talk to you a minute? Why, sure, Nick. What's on your mind? I want you to know that uh, I sure enjoyed, <laughs> I can't say I really enjoyed it, but everything you said is true, and I'm quitting. You can take these cigarettes and use them to kill mice or something. I'm finished. Nick, do you really mean this? Yes, sir. No kidding, Doc. You really have convinced me. Well, Nick, that's wonderful. That's a very intelligent decision. And now, how about you? Don't forget. Tobacco is a loaded pistol, and time pulls the trigger.